Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brendan Plays. This is Total Extreme Wrestling for our All Elite Wrestling Save, Week 1 of February 2021. And we are just about, I think, four or five weeks away from our upcoming AEW Revolution event. Now, looking forward to this one. This should be a very, very strong pay-per-view for us. Our card is pretty much set. Storylines are all ready to go. And uh, let's have a quick little rundown of how our storylines are going before we get into this week's edition of Dark. FTR and the Hardy, 64 rated heat at the moment. Inner Circle, Young Bucks, 75, a little bit low. Moxley and Darby, so far so good, 84. Kenny versus the Elite, mainly Kenny Omega versus um, Cody Rhodes. That is 71. Of course, we had Kenny Omega beat Adam Page in the last episode. And we had the Good Brothers make their debut. So it'll be interesting to see what happens this week with those guys. Miron Park currently at 62. Lancer Archer will be involved in that one as well. I don't think we're going to put Brian Cage in there. I think uh, we might leave him out. So I might you know, remove him. The storyline really doesn't make sense. It's really just been Park, Miro, Archer. Um, and we need to have, obviously, Park and uh, Miro go one-on-one -on -one for the championship. So that might take place this week. And... Um, then maybe Lance Archer gets himself involved and causes the match to be a no contest or maybe it maybe allows uh, Miro to win, something like that, um, to allow Archer to kind of insert himself. MJF and Sting, 83. This is probably our best built storyline so far. I think this is the week we might have Sting get a little bit physical and maybe respond and react to MJF. Maybe those two can finally go in the middle of the ring and, and have a promo of some sorts and do something there. Um, all our guys in the mid card still trying to move them up the card and trying to figure out who's the right guy to, to get the push to. So I find this Strollin is working pretty well. We're having some solid matches, and I think it's been a, a nice addition to Dark, anyways, to get us a good match every single show. Uh, Big Swole, Nyla Rose, 36. That's okay so far. Proud and Powerful and Jurassic Express. That's just kind of starting out, but so far, so good. 65. Sarks and Cardona pretty much finished here. We might do a rematch this week and kind of call it quits. The acclaimed and Varsity Blondes, just kind of a pre-show, dark sort of thing. 46, it's not too bad. Um, still trying to figure out what's going with the Dark Order in that storyline. 37 rated as we try and build up Eric Redbeard a little bit. And Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker for 49. That's our women's championship match coming up at Revolution. And so far, I think that's doing pretty well. All the segments have been 50, so that's pretty good considering... Uh, that's a women's storyline. So things are looking pretty good for us. We've got Dark Book, so we might as well go ahead and show the results. So let's get straight into it. Fair bit of stuff in the pre-show, including Janela and Kiss taking on the Hybrid 2 for a 44-rated match. And um, this one also advances the moving up the card storyline uh, because Joe Janela was involved. Um, Sunday Kiss 31, Janela 46, and Helico 45, Jack Evans 44. We gave the win, actually, to Janela and Kiss. That's a rare win for those two. Um, really, there's nothing I'm going to do with Sunny Kiss, unfortunately. And Joe Janela, I don't see a lot of, I don't see much in either. So it's really those two teaming, or really not much at all for those guys. So I gave them a win just to see, you know, how they're faring and give them a bit of momentum potentially. Um, TH2, unfortunately, taking the L there. Kip Sabian was with Miro and Penelope Ford. As uh, there's a video of Sabian and Miro hanging out and getting along pretty well so it's good to see I suppose good to see that um, you know Miro's trying to carry Kip Sabi to some sort of popularity and uh, Penelope Ford will benefit from it as well maybe so yeah it's a pre-show one but hopefully Kip can get a little bit out of it B. Priestley in Red Velvet for 29 B. Priestley 31 Red Velvet 19 we gave the win to Velvet of course B. Priestley on her way out so Eddie Kingston cutting a 59 rated promo as he advances the moving up the card storyline. No surprise, this is a great promo because Eddie Kingston's involved, but I'd love to get Eddie to 50 popularity. I just feel like, you know, more promos, maybe involving himself in another high profile um, storyline be the way to go. Working with Moxley really helped him a lot, so maybe we try and do something like that with him soon. Of course, they've got the family in there, so uh, I think a tag team storyline would be the way to go with, you know, with Penta and Phoenix. Eddie Kings is the mouthpiece, um, but we'll have to try and find out who's the right, you know, next opponent for, for them. Priscilla Kelly and Tay Conti for 34. Uh, Priscilla 36, Tay Conti 23. Tay Conti got the win. Of course, Priscilla on her way out as well, trying to get Tay Conti a bit of popularity. All right, the actual episode of Dark on the main show, we had a segment here. As Marco Stunt called out Proud and Powerful for interfering in their recent title match. 
He got beaten down and was laughed at until Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus came out and uh, ran Santana and Ortiz off. So Marco stunt in the ring by himself, calling out proud and powerful. Just a bad move, you know. Those two guys, the thugs, are going to come out and beat him down, and they did. Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy were a little bit too late. The damage had been done. Marco Stunt getting hurt here. 55 rated segments, so pretty good. You know, considering, you know, it's not a match, it's more of a segment. You know, I think that works out quite well. I'm not too phased by that one. Yeah, lose the storyline heat, but considering that, you know, the storyline was heat was really high because their interaction with the Inner Circle, the Young Bucks, um, this is probably more where the storyline should be at, and 55 is pretty good. Riho has a hype video return, uh, return hype video, let's call it that. Um, so Rio, I think, is coming back to AEW in real life. Uh, yay, can't wait for that. So I figured we better, you know, better bring her back here. So Rio on her way back. Now look, I say that, you know, as a dick, but look, Riho could actually bring quite a bit of, quite a bit to our women's division, considering that it's pretty weak at the moment. Um, fresh matchups, someone who can probably get a good in-ring performance, I'd say. I, it's been so long since we used her that I don't quite remember what she would perform at, but at least probably around 40 plus. And that's pretty valuable at this stage. So let's hope Rio can come back and, and succeed. Eric Redbeard defeated Michael Nakazawa in a five minute match. Redbeard 48, Nakazawa 27. Only a 27 match, so it's a little disappointing. Um, I suppose being a squash match, like I said, squash matches just aren't really responding very well, and it doesn't matter who we put in it, put in it, if it's Lance Archer, Brian Cage, it just doesn't matter, it's just not really working, so no exception to the rule here for Redbeard, unfortunately, 48 from him, but still just a 27 match. Awesome Kong and Britt Baker uh, in the ring, and they beat down a local wrestler, so a bit of a, sort of like a match, but really just before the match could even begin, Awesome Kong just beats her down, and and Britt Becker gets on the mic and brags about how she's untouchable thanks to Awesome Kong watching her back. So 45 for this one. And of course, this one is directed towards Thunder Rosa advancing that storyline. Tony Schiavone's with the Hardys for a 68 rated segment here as he interviews the Hardys about their return as a team and, as a, and about a match with FTR. So 68 rated here advancing the FTR and Hardy Boys storyline, which is good. Uh, Tony Schiavone didn't really perform that well though, so a bit of a sit-down interview here with the Hardys. Um, good opportunity to utilize some extra time here on Dark for a promo um, segments here. So I think it was a good idea, it, it does certainly help. Um, we haven't had a lot of success so far with the FTR and Hardy Boys storyline, so this is um, a good step in the right direction. The Acclaimed took on the Lucha Brothers for 55, advancing the Acclaimed and Varsity Blonde storyline. Thanks to Brian Pillman Jr. getting himself involved and costing Max Caster the match. Lucha Brothers kind of out of the mix at the moment, but they need to be in the mix ASAP. Ray Phoenix, 75 rated performance. My goodness, that is incredible. Penta, 61, and the Acclaimed, 28 apiece. So, 55 match is good. And that's why the Acclaimed and Varsity Blonde storyline is really good at the moment because it's been back and forth. We've been using some top tag teams to help boost the storyline. And look, Lucha Brothers, we just talked about it a moment ago with Eddie Kingston. You know, they are ready to go as probably main event guys. Ray Phoenix, we just used him in a main event slot. Well, he could stay there quite realistically. Um, they just need some people to work with at the moment. They don't really have that luxury. But um, soon, I'm sure we'll find a high-profile situation for these guys um, to get themselves involved in. Ricky Starks is with Taz, and they're bragging about how they beat down Cardona. Matt Cardona comes out, and he asks for a rematch. So we're setting up for Starks and Cardona in a rematch for 52-rated segment. Not bad. Advancing storyline for Starks and Cardona as well. Dustin Rhodes cuts a promo talking talking about how important winning tonight is for his career. So, moving up the card straw in advance and gaining heat, Dustin Rhodes has been out of the mix a little bit, struggling, wants a big win to try and get himself back on track. So, he took on Colt Cabana for a 51 rated match. Dustin Rhodes wins, 14, 14 minute match. Colt Cabana, Colt Cabana 51 and Dustin Rhodes 45. Not bad from both guys there, and that's the main event for this show. 
So that gives us a 47 rated episode of Dark. Not bad. We had some good stuff there uh, in the end. A couple of good matches and some good promos. So that helps out some of our lower end storylines. All right, let's take a look at the episode of Dynamite on the pre-show. Cesar Bononi will take on Sean Spears as Cesar 30. Sean Spears 38. Actually, not too bad from Cesar. I think he's been doing some dark matches in real life. So I saw him here as a local wrestler. I thought I'd give him a shot. That's not bad, actually. 30 is pretty decent for a local guy. So maybe not might not be a bad idea to maybe look at maybe bringing him in as a, another low-end talent to add to the roster. We probably do have a few spots for someone to kind of fill in that role. Uh, Sean Spears is okay. Gave him the win, 38, for that one. Priscilla Kelly lost to Big Swole again for 37. Big Swole, 32. Priscilla, 38. These two work pretty well, though. 37 match is pretty good. We had a big eight-man tag with the Dark Order taking on the Initiative and Janela and Kiss for 44. Eric Redbeard and Joey Janela, the best of the match, 49 apiece. We gave the win to the Dark Order. So, bit of a match here with the Dark Order getting a chance to get in the ring with Redbeard and kind of follow his direction and see how they kind of compete with him as their leader. So far, they haven't teamed with him yet, so a chance for them to kind of mingle in with him. And not too bad, 44 in the end. Rio had a hype video for her once again for 32. Just trying to, you know, build a bit of hype for, you know, for Rio. Trying to get people interested in her. I might get myself interested in seeing her back. And we had Will Hobbs take on Brian Pillman Jr. for 41. Hobbs, 41. Pillman, 35. Pretty good from both guys, actually. Um, we haven't forgotten about Will Hobbs. He's not in a storyline at the moment. You know, he's in a tricky period where he just doesn't have enough popularity to kind of be in the mix yet. So trying to get him some wins, just trying to keep him active, trying to keep him out there. 41 in ring, though, from him is pretty good. If he can keep going in that direction where he gets 40, 45, 50 at some point, you know, he'll be valuable for us. Okay, we open up the show with Anderson Gallows and Omega with Don Callis for 60. Yeah, this one didn't quite hit as well as we would have liked. Kenny Omega's in the ring, calls his group the new elite, and challenges Cody Rhodes to a match. So, yeah, this one a bit flat. I suppose having Anderson Gallows in there, maybe that brought things down a little bit. Don Callis, he was on the mic as well. Maybe we should just have Kenny Omega do all the talking and be the central focus of this segment, perhaps. But, hey, look, we tried something different. We tried to get Anderson Gallows out there as well to get them established. So maybe we'll have a rethink of how we go about it for next time. We had Anderson Gallows uh, in the ring, though, as a team for their AEW debut. So Anderson 49, Gallows 51. They took on the Gun Club, who got 46 and 23. We had Don Callis managing Anderson Gallows, and looks like Anderson and Callis don't have much uh, chemistry there, so we'll have to rethink that. But looks like um, Gallows and Callis should be okay, so that's fine. 49 rated match. Looks like Anderson and Gallows have got about mid 40s popularity, and they should be performing around 50, so that's okay, nothing special. But, um, you know, there should be a decent team for us. MGF demands that Sting meet him in the ring tonight. 74 rated. Not as good as a usual MJF promo, but still pretty good. So we're going to have Sting and MJF do something big in our main event slot here tonight. Lance Archer says that, uh, well, he and Jake say that uh, they'll be watching the main event very closely. So our main event tonight will be Park and Miro for the... TNT title. Darby Allen took on Matt Seidel in a 60 rated match. Darby 63, Seidel 47. We had this as a high sports match, actually. So we try to have this one a bit gimmicky. These guys just bounce around and do everything that it takes to have a, a good, you know, quick, high quality match. And I think they delivered. 60 rated is pretty good. So Darby Allen gets another win to continue his momentum boost. We had the Inner Circle cutting a promo on. Their rivals, the Young Bucks, and of course, Jurassic Express. We had Santana and Ortiz talking in this segment, as well as Guevara and Jericho. So we had everyone in the inner circle involved. So that's probably why the segment was brought down a little bit. But I wanted to have, you know, I didn't want to you know, just have Proud and Powerful stand there while Chris Jericho cuts a promo on Jurassic Express. You know, we could have done that. It would make still make sense. But... You know, I wanted them to get involved and, and get their mic skills going. And, 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 you know, if it's a good segment, I want their popularity to increase as well. So, you know, we took a risk. 68's not so great. We'll need to certainly have Inner Circle 
just have a promo on themselves, by themselves rather, with the Young Bucks to try and boost that storyline up. But, uh, you know, it helps two storylines here a little bit, so not too bad. Nyla Rose defeated Bea Priestley in a 20-rated match. Uh, quick little squash for Nyla, who got 41, Bea Priestley 29. We tried to um, get Nyla Rose a win here to boost the Big Swell storyline who was watching ringside, but yeah, again, a domination squash match. Didn't really hit the mark. Hey man, Adam Page says he's not finished with Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers, so Adam Page not done just yet. 75 rated promo, very good. That'll help the Kenny and Elite storyline after a pretty bad opening segment. FTR and SCU had a 66 rated match. Cash Wheeler 73, Dax 68, Daniels 55, Kazarian 51. Yeah, this is good. Both teams kind of worked really well together, put on a nice match. We had this as a steal of the show, so we tried to really get the most we could out of this, and I feel like we did. Cash Wheeler's gimmick's getting a bit stale as well, so we're gonna fix that up. But um, yeah, really high quality match, and this is probably what we needed. You know, we had the Hardy Boys storyline advance as well. You know, I think FTR, let their talking be all done in the ring, just through their in ring work. You know, let the wrestling do the talking for them. So, um, you know, that's kind of the strategy here, and I think it worked out pretty well. SCU, still a very good tag team. Not quite, you know, valued at, you know, probably our sixth or seventh best team, really, on the pecking order, but still, they've got some value, and teaming up against FTR here makes for a good match. Post match, well, this is something good. The Hardys attack FTR and hit them with their finishes. So a 71 rated segment. You know, FTR did the blind side attack on the Hardy Boys a few weeks back. So now it's a chance for the Hardy Boys to get their revenge a little bit. Attack FTR, who continue to say, no, we don't want to wrestle. No, no, no. We'd keep ducking the Hardys. They don't want to fight. Well, now the Hardys are sick of waiting. And they're going to bring the fight to FTR and get them here. 71. So that worked pretty well. John Marks with an 84 rated promo. Moxie says Darby is good, but not quite ready yet for a world title shot. So it might really mean that Darby Allen might need one more big win, someone significant that he beats to get him in line for that title opportunity. Our main event was Park versus Miro, and they have no chemistry. Of course they've got no chemistry. Park 62, Miro 58. Well, this is why we need Lance Archer to make it a triple threat. Speaking of Lance Archer, he distracted Park and cost him the match, allowing Miro to make it his first title defense of the TNT title. 62. Well, look, honestly, Miro's not impressing me. Park has been okay. I'm nearly, I would be nearly ready to put the belt on Lance Archer and just forget about both of these guys, honestly. That's kind of where I'm nearly at. I'm more interested and more invested in Lance Archer at this point. Bit disappointing from these two. Look, they've got no chemistry, fair enough, but hopefully a triple threat match, we can get something better than what we just saw there. And after the match, a post-match three-way brawl broke out as Lance Archer got in the ring and started attacking Miro and Park, who tried to fend off Archer. So 63 for the brawl there, advancing the storyline. Not bad there, not bad. All right, final segment was MJF and Sting with 86. Wow. All right, they're in the ring, and Sting says he's sick of MJF's commands, and he pushes down MJF. They get a bit heated. Things get a bit physical as Wardlow and MJF about to, you know, two-on-one attack. Sting. Sting grabs out his trusty baseball bat and stands there ready to fight. So... Things get a little bit different here. You know, Sting starting to stand up for himself and starting to kind of, you know, say, look, I'm sick of your crap. I'm sick of your BS, MJF. I've made my decision a while back. You're going to have to earn your title shot. If you don't like it, too bad. And, well, you know, eventually enough is enough. Sting pushes down MJF. MJF's going to start, you know, ganging up on him. And then the baseball bat comes out to save the day. So this is my might be where MJF might try and get Sting fired as, you know, he's... You know, being the AEW authority figure or something like that. And it might lead to a match that way. 86 though for that segment. Fantastic. Great way to finish the show in what was a 68 rated show in the end. We didn't have a good quality match realistically, but we had some good segments. Some, you know, for example, the Omega and the Elite um, segment. That was a bit of a downer. But, you know, we established some storylines, continued to advance a few. So... 
you know, not too bad of a show. We didn't really have a great big show, I feel, but, you know, some things that did well did really well, and things that didn't do so well, yeah, didn't do so well. All right, let's take a look at the overall results and the ratings. NXT, they did 660,000 viewers on uh, their network, 533,000 USA network, and they had about a million people watching on the WWE network. So still, you know, if we look at what their TV rating is and compare that to ours, that's kind of the main focus rather than the WWE network subscription because that's obviously, you know, I don't think the game can accurately determine, okay, one million people watched it. I think it just kind of says, okay, these are all the subscribers the network's got. I could be wrong, but that's kind of how I view it anyway. So we will focus on the TV ratings. And that's the case, we're in the lead. So that's why we'll focus on it. We'll pretend that we're winning. So we had 791,000 viewers watch our show, which is a pretty good 68 rated show in the end, as we said. I'm happy with that. Like I think we're you know slowly getting better. I think the more shows we can get to 70 plus, the better. And that should give us a bit of momentum to finally start growing as a company. Um, so pretty good stuff there. So obviously some other things in the news, RVD is gonna stay with Impact. Um, look, I, like, I've always been a fan of Rob Van Dam, but 50 years of age, probably not worth bringing him in at all. Kane's now gone from WWE, so Kane's gone, Big Show's gone, Undertaker's gone, so all their part-time veterans. Looks like in TW World, the WWE might actually start to be looking at pushing their young talent. What a foreign concept that is. Um, for us, uh, we're actually going to start signing some new talent, um, so we're going to keep Rebel and Preston Vance, but obviously we've now been able to import Jade Cargill into our game. She doesn't have a photo yet, but we'll get one for her. Uh, for some reason, she has no wrestling stats, so we'll change that. Obviously, she will wrestle. We know she's going to, going to have that match with Shaquille O'Neal um, and Cody. So I don't know if we'll bring in Shaq, the Shaq attack. Um, maybe, maybe we will. I don't know. Um, depends. But uh, for now, we're at least going to bring in Jade, who will start with 23 popularity, 30 in the Southeast. So, hey, I'll take that. That's pretty good. Uh, her base stats, sex appeal, star quality are really good. Decent charisma. So once we get some wrestling stats for her, she might actually be decent. Um, Eddie Cruz, who is Serpentico, we're going to bring him in. Which means oh, we're going to bring back Luther. Yep, Chaos Project. I figured, well, it's a tag team, it's an AEW team, Miles will use it, right? So, yep, and I just found out that Luther does not want to work Dark. He only wants to work Dynamite, so we can only really put him on the pre-show Dynamite, I would say. Um, so I don't know how long Luther will last with Serpentico, maybe not long. And then we saw um, Bear Country. I saw them on Dynamite, I thought, you know what? These guys could be something. So Bear Bronson, and I think it's not Bear Beefcake, he's got a different name, but um, yeah, so the, these two guys, Bear Boulder is the, his actual name, yeah, so Bear Boulder and Bear Bronson, um, I don't think they're going to be anything special, but it's another low-end tag team, you know, the Acclaimed and Varsity Blondes, I see them better as just, you know, basement garbage tag team. That's what um, Chaos Project can be. And then maybe Bear Country might be that for a while. But I, I, some other teams I feel like elevating a little bit. And we've got to bring in some lesser teams to kind of help that out. And that's where these guys will come in. Good low end tag team just to kind of help fill out the roster a little bit and give us some new fresh matchups. Um, so I, I think that'll bring us some value. There might be some other guys we'll bring in. You know, obviously AEW Dark just has a, a stack of people. You know, we saw Cesar come in and he had a match. Um, for us this week, and he was actually pretty decent. Uh, he's got 13 pop in the southeast, and he had a 30 rated performance, which um, is surprisingly really good. Uh, we brought him in a while back to take on Dustin Rose, and he had 29 on that occasion as well. So, look for his popularity, he's not too bad at all, actually. 77 star quality, so he could be something. Um, so, he's 34, so he's got a bit of time left in tech, might be worth thinking about, but. Um, Nonetheless, let's go ahead and take a look at the popularity changes, see if we had any this week. So not too much movement from the top guys, but Matt Hardy, now at 56 popularity, so he's starting to get back on track, which is good to see. Um, Ortiz, 49 popularity now, which is pretty good. Santana 
at 47 in the southeast. He's not too far off as well. Uh, Ray Phoenix, 52 pop, really good. So a bit of improvement there. Uh, Wardlow, 48. MJF's got 66 pop now. So no, you know, starting to see some change there, which is good. Um, and then lower down the card as well. Not too much change down the lower end of the card, really, uh, which is a little frustrating. You know, I guess I need some small things like Red Velvet going up to 16. Nothing really to talk about. Uh, we mentioned earlier on about Riho, how we're bringing her back. I want to take a look at her match results. Now, she's been pretty active in Japan, but I think she's only had one match with us in the history of the save. And that was against Anna J, and she performed at 45 on that occasion. Um, which is obviously fantastic. So, yeah, that's pretty good. So when Riho comes back, she should be pretty valuable. Her popularity is at 32 in the southeast uh, and hasn't changed. So sometimes when they get, you know, when they're not used for so long, it can uh, drop. But I guess she's been active enough in Japan that she hasn't had that happen to her, which is a relief. So uh, I'd say we'll bring back Rio pretty soon. You know, AEW in real life are doing a women's tournament, which is actually something I was probably thinking about doing after Revolution myself. Um, so I guess we could just copy it and go with it, but um, I don't think we'll be bringing in the international talent like they're doing. A USA and Japan side of things, I think that's a cool idea. Uh, I think we probably just stick to our, stick to our in-house talent, maybe an eight-woman uh, tournament, maybe 16. You know, I don't even think we have 16 women under contract, but it uh, might be worth thinking about as well. You know, obviously Miro is the TNT champion we spoke about earlier. Do we pull the trigger on Lance Archer and get the belt off Miro? Um, you know, so far, I'll, I'm not even sold on Miro in my TW save. He's not impressing me in real life, but even in TW, he hasn't really done that amazing. He's got 63 pop now, so there has been some improvement. He started at 59, so he is getting over. So we have to respect that. I just guess his match performances have been, you know, okay. You know, low 60s, nothing too fancy. But in saying that, you know, we talk about Park, 58 pop now for Park. He hasn't been that amazing either. I mean, he did have the 72 against Lance Archer. So I suppose, you know, at New Year Smash, he had a pretty solid match and kind of proved that he can deliver. But I think we're getting a little bit too much inconsistency from Park for my liking. So... Uh, maybe it's just a bad matchup, Mira and Park, but hopefully those guys can recover. Because I think Mira, Park, and Archer, that's a pretty good mix for the TNT title. I like that. And I wouldn't be afraid of giving Archer the belt at this point. Okay, as we get ready to wrap things up, let's take a quick little look at our new signings. So we've got uh, Bear Country, they're officially in. Bear, Bear Boulder and Bear Bronson. Um, you know, the most, probably, the best part of this team is probably their Menace. 79 from Boulder. 75 from Bronson. So, you know, they could be an intimidating tag team. We're getting them in as bay faces. Their default gimmick is a badass. We might stick with that. We might change that. I think probably should change it. You know, it's not really... It doesn't really make a lot of sense to be a low-end tag team and be a badass. So we might switch that up. You know, we spent... Uh, we mentioned Jade Cargill before. Now she's got the pitcher. She's got the boss bitch gimmick. Probably would work. I think that's okay. As I said, we need to get her some uh, in-ring stats, uh, and we'll do that pretty soon. Uh, and Serpenetico, he now joins us as well. He'll be a heel with Luther. Serpenetico, no promo skills, you know, wrestling skills, are very average. Yeah, very, very average. There's not a lot really going for him. And luckily for him, that works pretty well, because there's absolutely nothing going for Luther. You know... No offense to Luther, but he might be one of the absolute worst wrestlers I've ever come across in my life. The, one of the worst I've ever seen on national TV in my life. But here we are. We've got him back. Luther's back. Can't wait. He and Serpentico, Chaos Project. Looking forward to it. It'll be good. Um, you know, if it's not good, that's too bad because they're back. And, uh, yeah, look, as I said, we need tag teams and... Happy for them to kind of join the Dudleys as one of those really low-end tag teams that kind of lose all the time. You know, we look, we need those. You know, it works. It's fine. So we'll see how they fare. And um, yeah, so we'll leave it at that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for this episode as we are just a few weeks away from Revolution. A few new signings. We'll unveil them in the next episode. Looking forward to seeing how it all goes down. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.